Hunter x Hunter, episode 106, Nob x and x Moral. Don't envy them. Nefer Pitova, Oh no Kizo Chilio Sirutame ni en o toki. Nobua, Sono Skio Tite, Kuden na ye shin new sta. It's like the championship game of human existence. Juo Kaita Madua, Mada Hyakume to Rijo. There would be part of this that's scary to not meet resistance, you know? Maybe take those out. Oh, 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 I can't explain why, but watching him, I'm getting the same feeling of dread I got watching, uh, what's her name? Panzu run for the forest clearing. Crazy that those egg sacks are trees and egg trees, human fruit. Imagine being the first one in too. Totally uncharted territory. No idea what to expect, but being essential to the plan. Imagine being outside of a dictator's palace. Just that thought alone. Farther you go, the harder it gets, more dangerous it gets. You know what else this reminds me of? Isn't there a boss in Metal Gear Solid 1 where right before that there are suspiciously no guards or very few guards? Get him. Whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, I was thinking infinite implications of this. Uses moved his head somewhere else. Lethal. Amazing. Yeah. Speaking of Metal Gears, Holotech could really use this ability for bodies. Oh, the panic. Those couple seconds. Move the sh put the shoes away? I, uh, he's panicking. What did he see? What did he feel? The hell is that? That's Aura. They will. Neverpedo is a master neuroscientist. I mean, you did a lot. Oh, quickly, make a circle fast now. Oh, he's gonna go further. He's the man. I mean, he didn't criticize Kalua as much as Moral did, but they both came into that situation, definitely earning the right to talk. He's famous. He's been working on his PR. Okay, Hagya. But he's not as fast. Hopefully he's as stupid. Everyone's doing their part. This is happening. This is the conversation. He can only use one power at a time though, right? Oh, is this Palm? Marcos this. Looking for another way in? Marcos this. Looking for another way in? Oh, this. Is there actual meat inside? Marcos and Joe. What kind of meat are we talking about here? Oh, it's both. It can be both. Palm one Ah, uh, he's in on it. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. One of the difficult things about being in a position of high profile and power is that the people around you know everything. Everything that you do. It can be pretty bizarre. People live very interesting lives. That's all I can really say. <laughs> okay. We didn't need that to get that feeling. This is part of his ritual. He enjoys the driving of the truck itself. 
area D. He's got a whole area for it. There's a lot more thought into this than his own little coffin office. What? This man has a hobby. There she is. She used makeup to hide her neuroticism. <sighs> Bosses be like, you're free to do whatever you like as long as you stay in the office. Relatable. What in the Handmaiden's Tale? This season of Hunter x Hunter really covering the gamut of international issues and dangers. <laughs> Speaking of hiding stuff, you also have to hide your revulsion if you're Palm. Speaking of games, this is also sort of Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> what? That's not what I expected. Okay. Also speaking of games, this whole environment is very Fallout. That is the perfect thing for a stalker. But she's got to meet them, no? Yeah, this is a similar problem that's been repeating through the show, where your attack risks strengthening the opponent. Oh, he actually did leave. At least he's alive. Nowhere is safe. Oh, yeah, it's all gonna catch up to him when the adrenaline wears off. My man is shook. Ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what's worse. I mean, they're kind of displaying that the aura is worse, but I feel like I would rather be in the palace myself than being outside of the palace wondering what's happening to Palm. Being able to have motion in something, to take action on something, has the effect of at least occupying your focus. Sitting around with this kind of anxiety, waiting, absolutely brutal. <laughs> Yeah, this is a crash, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, but this is some understanding for them, yeah. You didn't know. Wow. I don't know, it's that and more. Oh, don't... Uh, okay, don't... I get it, it's great, it's beautiful. Don't do anything stupid. Yourself. Is he just out? Is that it? He's done? It's kind of suspicious. You're risking playing your hand here. Good thing he's a lecherous person and arrogant. Gamble paid off. He probably chose it. He would be, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, I think he probably took this contained space for the vape stuff. Get vaped. Does an enclosed space enhance the power? These ants don't seem very smart so far, but you don't want to underestimate even so. That cuts both ways. There's fakes and double fakes. This is enjoying himself. Look at my iPod. Why did he show it to him? Oh, it's also actually an iPod. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Oh, they like the same music. They do have a similar vibe. I have no enemies. Oh, that's this episode? Which one is he choosing? It's 
a little bit too humanizing. You don't want to think about your enemies being humans and like living lives and enjoying themselves and having friendships, having beautiful moments, but it's dishonest not to. I mean, you can still oppose someone, but just start ignoring people's humanity for convenience is kind of dangerous. This is a great episode, but where was the Gunji? <laughs> I need more Gunji. Just kidding. Actually, I think Nav's segment was done really well, capturing the fear. It almost worked better with there being nothing, you know? That's another thing I think I've seen in the show more than once. It gives the greatest power to moments by them being the opposite of what you expect. An example would be Never Peter's entrance. It's not this grand showing. Actually, we can see very directly what the obvious thing would be, which is uh, Mythanthropy. This is the entrance. <laughs> the big, powerful muscle dude busting through a wall. Her entrance was very unceremonious. Like all great managers, she kind of dropped in unceremonious harmoniously from her egg sack. With Nav, it could have been this big, huge confrontation, fighting waves after waves of enemies, but it ended up being more terrifying, being met with absolute silence and anticipation. One of the scariest moments of the episode is him panicking, trying to get the goo off his shoes, and then just abandoning them in his haste. He went through all this length to dispose of the body, but forgot his blood-stained shoes. You can just feel his mentality dissolving. It also was a really cool throwback or full circle moment to when they showed up and kind of lectured Gonin Kalua. It was mostly moral, but Nav also could not not have possibly known what they had gone through. There was zero sympathy given to them, despite what they had encountered and having just lost, you know, their mentor. And it's like, yeah, okay, now you get it. Now you're on the same page. It's a good question. Having felt that, what are they doing it for? They do care about saving lives. They'll go in perhaps sort of in a, in a detached way. It's there. They absolutely care about saving Kite, especially going. It's also more. It's chasing for an ideal or hunting for your dream. It's just the highest, farthest thing they can reach for at the moment. It's the ticket to their destiny. I mean, what else would they be doing right now? Just chasing money, appraising artifacts, joining the mafia, video games, dodgeball. No, their personalities are they're going to attack the biggest, largest, most grand thing they can possibly see in front of them.